Well, good morning. <laughs> good. All the respect I command, hey? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church this morning and happy first Sunday of Advent. Uh, this is our tree decorating service today. So uh, great to have you here worshiping with us. I am Pastor Daniel and this is Peterborough Free Methodist Church. Um, our tree decorating service, we'll, we'll talk about how that's going to flow in a moment, but what you do need is an ornament in hand. So these are out in the church foyer. Uh, everybody needs one because you are going to help us uh, decorate the Christmas tree this morning. That's what today's service is about. <clears throat> but first, a few announcements. Uh, one is thank you to all the organizers and all the helpers. Uh, for yesterday's mystery dinner that happened here. Uh, so this was a fundraiser for the youth group who we are hoping in 2026, so uh, another year from now, uh, we'll, we'll be able to send them on a, a winter retreat together. Uh, winter retreats are a, a fantastic way uh, for them to learn, gel together, and for the Lord to work in their lives. So uh, that's what we're hoping for, and that's what we're aiming towards. And so last night we had the mystery dinner, uh, Pastor Holly, Pilar, Cindy, uh, many other helpers, and of course uh, <coughs> teens involved, and uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, decent comedic actors in our church. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. We raised last night $690 for the teens and for that event that will be upcoming now. Our office administrator, Aaron, has been hard at work getting directories ready. They are now printed and they are in hand. If you uh, did not get one of those coming in today, then you can speak with Aaron and uh, she'll make sure to get you one of those. So uh, thanks to Aaron for... Uh, battling the church photocopier a little bit and uh, getting those time. Yes, thumbs up from Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. We have printed a uh, Christmas calendar of church events over this uh, Christmas season. So those are in the foyer on the welcome table. Make sure you grab one of these. And also on Saturdays, I send an email update out as a newsletter uh, so that you can know what's going on and happening in the life of our church. Uh, so if you are not on that email list, please let me know. I'll get you put on. Otherwise, uh, if you don't do email, if, you don't, or if you're not on the list yet, I print off a few copies and they're on the welcome table. You can have a printed copy of those. And then today we have a coffee hour happening after service. So downstairs in our fellowship hall, we'll have some refreshments after the service. So please uh, don't feel that you have to rush off after the service is over. But stick around and, and have and enjoy some fellowship one with another. I think those are all the announcements I need to make. So uh, let me tell you about a colleague I had when I was pastoring in Saskatchewan in Prince Albert. I was at the Free Methodist Church, of course, and uh, there was a Ukrainian Catholic church in our town. And Father Ivan was the priest there. And through ministerial, I got to know Father Ivan, and we would have ministerial meetings there from time to time. And it was one of those churches, you've probably seen an Orthodox church before. It's got the, the rounded dome tops. Uh, that's what they look like on the outside. But on the inside, it was full of iconography. What do I mean by iconography? Pictures and statues and all that kind of stuff, right? And the church was, was full. As soon as you walked into the church, there was statues, there was, there was pictures all over the wall, even all over the ceiling. And I asked Father Ivan one time, I said, uh, why so much in our, in our Protestant evangelical tradition, we tend to go pretty low-key with that kind of stuff. And here in your church, it's, it's everywhere you look. He says, well, we recognize that in the course of a service, people's minds will probably wander. <laughs> Doesn't happen here in the Free Methodist Church. I know, I know that for sure. And he said, so, no matter who you are, no matter where you look, you're going to encounter the story of Christ. I think there is room in the church for symbolisms. Uh, this morning, we kick off the Advent season 
with a service of uh, symbols. We're going to go light. <laughs> but uh, we start with a bare Christmas tree. And so there's going to be some ornaments placed on it. And all really we're doing is we're, we're taking some ideas from the scriptures and uh, using some tree ornaments, decorations, and just explaining why uh, we think these specific ornaments help to remind us of the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. So that's what this morning is about. What will happen is uh, we've got nine different readers. The reader will come up and they will... Um, uh, they, I'm just remembering that we were supposed to start with a song. <laughs> and, and I came up and I just started to go. Yeah, <laughs> Jim, thank, yeah, I have one right in front of me. And it says song right at the start. Okay, where was I? I threw myself off. Uh, so... The reader will come up and uh, read about the symbolism of the ornament, and then we'll sing a Christmas carol after that. And those who have that ornament that was just described, everybody, you're just going to come up and put it on the tree wherever you like. So we have a worship team that's going to lead us in song, and I think what we'll do is we'll have them do the first song now, and then after, Bob, after this song, then you just come right up to the microphone. When the readers come up, please make sure to adjust this microphone. If it's not quite adjusted, I'll, I'll come up and, and help you. Um, and I think that gives us all the direction we need. Okay, thank you. Please stand with us and let's sing Joy to the World.
Thank you. Please be seated. Stars signify the brightness of God's glory. In total darkness, a very small candle flame can be seen as far away as 14 miles. If such a small light has that much effect, you can imagine that a star has much more. What better symbol than a star could we use for the glory of God, which dispels darkness and illuminates our path? so we no longer have to grope and stumble through life. And that light of God's glory is seen most clearly in his son, Jesus Christ. John 8, 12 tells us that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Well, children of light are, in turn, supposed to radiate Jesus' light. We don't just soak it up we need to allow the light of Christ to shine through us. Isaiah 60, 1 and 2 says it well. Arise, my people, let your light shine for all the nations to see, for the glory of the Lord is streaming from you. Darkness as black as night shall cover all the peoples of the earth, but the glory of the Lord shall shine upon you. Then in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A city set on top a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on a stand, it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And Paul, in Ephesians 5.8, says, You groped your way through the murk once, but no longer. The bright light of Christmas makes your way plain. You are the light, you are light in the Lord, so walk as children of light. Our first act this morning will be to light the Christmas tree as we hang the star decorations. As the lights are lit, the star on top reminds us that Jesus is the true light of God's glory. The smaller lights, though, remind us that God's glory must shine through us too. Let us sing, it came upon a midnight clear, so we light the Christmas tree and hang our decorations. Please stand with us.
seated. Angels and proclaimers. Angels are often misunderstood as part of our world. They are frequently depicted in movies and TV shows in roles that they do not really play. In fact, the real job of angels is perhaps best seen in the Christmas story. They were messengers. Their simple task was to tell people the good news of a savior being born. They did not interfere. They did not push or pull people to the manger. They simply opened their mouths to tell the good news. In Luke 1, 30 to 38, it was an angel who said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of the ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of the kingdom, there will be no end. The angel Gabriel told Mary that she was to have a son conceived by the Holy Spirit. It was an angel who calmed Joseph's fears and doubts about being taking Mary as his wife. When Jesus was born, angels in awesome splendor announced his birth to the shepherds. The wise men did not stop by the, to see King Herod on their way home because an angel warned them of danger. It was an angel who informed Joseph to take his family and flee to Egypt for safety, and thus the baby Jesus was kept from harm. Example after example, angels are shown to have done their job well. They had the privilege of proclaiming the birth of Jesus to the whole world, and that's just what they did. So let us hang our angel decorations on the tree and sing our next song. Half the air of angels sing, and as we do, be reminded of the news of great joy, that in the city of David, our Savior, who is Christ the Lord, was born. All right. Please stand with us. <coughs> the herald angels sing.
There we go. While doing their everyday job of taking care of the sheep, shepherds were the first group of people to hear the historic news of Jesus' birth. This was no coincidence because Jesus was very similar to the shepherds in his work. Many years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah spoke these words about him in Isaiah 40 to 11. He tends to his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads them to those who have young. What are the good traits of a shepherd? Always leading, not driving. Knowing the surroundings and being aware of danger. Making sure the directions and settings are the right place. The shepherd watch, provide, and defend, never forsaking. The crook of his staff is used to gently lift up lambs when they fall into tough spots. The stout end is used to drive away wolves and other preying animals. That is also how Jesus treats us as a gentle, guiding shepherd. He loves us, keeps watch over us, steers us in the right direction, and saves us from peril, and knows each of us by name. In John 10 to 14, Jesus himself says, I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Candy canes remind us that Jesus is the good shepherd. As we sing while shepherds watch, let's hang our candy cane decorations on the tree as a reminder that Je Jesus gently leads us like shep a shepherd. I think I wanted to do the candy cane. It looked more fun. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. I said that out loud. The dove. <laughs> so, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. What a beautiful and peaceful picture is painted in those words. 
It reminds us of a moonlit winter's night with snow lightly falling on our faces, like last night, north of the city. And on our outstretched tongues, we cherish these images as Christmas because we know that the world is anything but peaceful. A list of things that disturb our peace is easy to create. The talk of war, faraway countries, natural disasters that affect the poorest countries the worst, worries about crime, tensions at work, the stress of a busy life. As followers of Jesus, we are not immune from these cares, yet we do have a promise, peace. After all, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. He, comes, he came to bring peace to our hearts, peace to our minds, peace to our souls, and peace to our world. What then does the, that peace look like? And you may want to, at home, read more of this chapter, but the first four verses are amazing. Isaiah 26, 3, the key part of this. He will keep in perfect peace all who trust in him, whose thoughts turn often to the Lord. And that section of the Bible, 1 to 4, talks about peace in the land. So we, we have hope and peace. The beauty of the peace that Jesus brings is that we can have it in the middle of a chaotic surroundings, like last night with the kids. <laughs> Remember the story of Jesus in the boat? He was sleeping while the disciples panicked in fear for their lives. With a simple command from Jesus, the storm calmed. Peace was restored. Faith and trust in our Savior, Jesus Christ, lets us know that we need not worry about anything anything. In John 16, 33, Jesus himself says, I have told you all that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured deeply at peace. It's very important. Accept it. Doves are a traditional symbol of peace. As we hang the dove ornament on the tree, and sing Silent Night, let us be reminded of the peace that Jesus has given us. Let us also, like doves, be known for bringing peace to others. Invite those with the doves to come up and hang your ornament on the tree. Please stand.
be seated. The cross. We wear cross necklaces. We have crosses in and on our churches. We even decorate our Christmas trees with crosses. What is the meaning of the cross? Well, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus came to die. First of all, Jesus was brutally beaten until his back was torn to shreds. And there he stood in a shameful, painful state, his body bleeding and bruised badly. He was forced to carry a huge wooden cross toward the place where he would be crucified. Due to the fact that Jesus was in such a weakened condition, from all the abuse that he had suffered, a man named Simon stepped in to assist him and carry the cross to Golgotha. Jesus was nailed to the cross with huge spikes driven through his hands and his feet, and a crown of large thorns was shoved down upon his head, causing blood to flow freely down his head and face. The cross was raised for all to see. This broken, bleeding, and naked God-man who was suffering unbelievable agony. He wasn't even recognizable because his body was so battered by all the torture that he had experienced. Wait a minute. Crucifixion was intended for criminals who had committed heinous crimes. Jesus was perfect and only accomplished that which was good and honorable, the cross. Man would consider it foolishness, but God worked in a very mysterious way, confounding even the wise to accomplish his purpose of redemption for sinful mankind because of his great love for us. Jesus, Lamb of God, the perfect sin offering for once and all time, it is finished. The cross, man's cruelty, God's solution. So let us celebrate Christmas with gusto because Jesus rose from the dead and he has freely provided abundant and eternal life for us as his redeemed. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who have a cross can hang it on the tree, and we're going to sing an absolute favorite of mine, the old rugged cross. We stand on.
Thank you. You can be seated. Snowflakes. The Bible often uses the imagery of snow to remind us of purity. In Psalm 51, verses 7 to 12, it says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, scripture says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. We all know how beautiful everything looks when white snow covers our lawns, houses, driveways, and trees. Your brown, dead lawn looks fresh and new after one short snowfall covers it. All the bare trees that have lost their leaves can look picture perfect when covered by a night's hoarfrost. Snow is a way of making clean that which was dirty. What a great analogy then for the gift of Jesus. Where our hearts are stained by sin, Jesus came to wash them clean. Forgiveness, redemption, and purity are gifts that Jesus brought from the Father to us. He came in such a little package, a child in swaddling clothes, but he does a work that no other can accomplish. He can cleanse sin and purify we who are stained. Our snowflake decoration should remind us of the purity that Jesus brings and the fact that the stain of our sin can be washed clean, as white as snow, by his blood. Let us hang our snowflake decorations on the tree while the congregation, that's you, can sing away in a manger as a reminder of the purity that Jesus brings to our lives. Come on, join me. Let's remain seated for Away in a Manger. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Butterflies depict new life in Christ. Butterflies depict new life in Christ. The sorrow of the cross did not remain long. For on the third day, the bonds of death were shattered and Jesus rose from the dead. He was set free from the limitations of his earthly body. Because of victory over the sting of death, he paved the way for us to experience new life in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, 17 says, If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new one has come. Our church is part of the tradition called the holiness movement. It means that we are very optimistic theologically. We hold that a person needs not commit a known sin when they are in Christ. We hold that our motives can pure as we relate with other people in love. We promote the belief that when Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect in Matthew 5, 48, he means it, not on our own strength, but in his. The butterfly is a beautiful symbol of this total transformation. We, who were once sinners, can be transformed into something new, the holy people of God. And this is possible only through the work of the Lord Jesus. From the imprisonment of the cocoon, a butterfly emerges, free and ready for flight into a new realm, just as we are freed to live new lives for him. Let us hang the butterfly decorations on the tree to remind us of the new life we have in Christ as we sing, Change My Heart, O God. Please stand.
joy to the world, the Lord has come, let earth receive her king. This songwriter Isaac Watts takes the electric emotions felt at Christmas and wraps them up in a package of joy. For the coming of Christ to the earth is the beginning of real joy for all those who believe in him. The angel Gabriel anticipated this as he described the news of Jesus' birth as good tidings of great joy. One of the values of our denomination, the Free Methodist Church um, in Canada, is celebration. There's joy and gladness in the fact that with God, all things are possible. And in Jesus, salvation has been made possible for all people. This is good news, and in the Christmas season, we have the opportunity to shout it from the rooftops. Some people complain that the Christmas season is too long and that it starts too early. Perhaps it has been over-commercialized, but what's wrong with an extended celebration? The birth of the Christ child in Bethlehem all those years ago is news so good that it is still celebrated today across the globe. Sometimes in the church, we play things cool in the name of humility, but let us not under-celebrate the person of Jesus and his birth. When Jesus was teaching his disciples, he said these words found in John chapter 15, 10 to 11. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. The arrival of Jesus brought the possibility of real joy to the world. Let us now hang the bell decorations as we sing, I Heard the Bells, to remind us of that joy and to celebrate it. Please stand.
crowns remind us that Jesus is the King of Kings. Jesus has ascended into heaven and will one day return as King of all the world. But until then, he will reign as King of our hearts. In John's vision as recorded in Revelation, he gives an account as to what this King may look like. In Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 to 18, he says, I turned and saw the one whose voice I had heard. I saw a gold monero with seven branches, and in the center was the Son of Man dressed in a robe and gold sash across his chest. His head and hair were as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. Both feet were like bronze refined in a fire, and his voice like the sound of many waters. In his right hand, he was holding seven stars, and from his mouth came a two-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining with full force. When I saw this, I fainted as though, as though I, had, I was dead at his feet. His right hand pulled me up. His voice reassured me, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead, but I came to life and my life is now forever. See these keys in my hand, they open and lock death's door. They open and lock hell's gates. That king of the future is the very same little baby who was born in the manger about 2,000 years ago. And today, if you believe in him, if you live in obedience to his loving guidance, then he is the king of your heart. Let us hang the crown decorations to remind us of Jesus, the baby who has become the king. And as we hang these last decorations, we'll sing, O come, all ye faithful. Here's our finished product. How do we do? Well done. Uh, let us also say thank you to all of our readers who came and 
did a great job. Thank you. I want to say thank you to our worship leaders and to Betty on piano for allowing your personality to flow through the keys. Well done. And so here for the remainder of the weeks of Advent, we will have the tree up with those decorations on it. And uh, you will have that re visual reminder each time that you come to the service and, and see the tree, see the ornaments. Uh, you'll be reminded of the, the various parts of the story of Christ that are so important for us to hold. Uh, let's pray and then I think we have one closing song. Yeah, I'm getting... Affirmation. Well, remember the closing song at the right spot. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for who you are and uh, this astounding story of the gift of Jesus into the world and what that means for us and to each one of us. Lord, over this Advent season, help us to ponder these things in our hearts as Mary pondered these things in her own heart. But Lord, the story is not only for us, it is for the whole world. The impact of Christ is for all those who do not even yet know you, that they might come to know you and be redeemed uh, before God through Jesus Christ. So we thank you for the salvation that is on offer. We thank you for the gift of Jesus. And as we enter into the Christmas and Advent season, uh, help us never put this secondary in our minds and hearts, but keep it at the forefront. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we stand as we sing one last uh, song together?
So thank you all for helping to decorate the tree today. Uh, right after service, immediately downstairs, we've got uh, coffee hour and some uh, refreshments set up for you. So please stick around and enjoy one another's company for a little while today. May the God of love, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 